Welcome to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. I'm your host, Pete Mazzetti. My guest this evening is Dr. Steve Minkler, who is the CEO of Middlesex Community College. Dr. Minkler, how are you, sir? I'm doing well, Pete. So good to see you good again. Good to see you again. What's new? Well, I mean, it's been two years, I think, or so. It, I since believe we something saw each like other. that. It so, has been a while. Yeah, so what's new? Well, we had sort of a little pandemic mixed in uh, to the work that we're doing at the college, <laughs> exactly. and I'm not trying to make light of it. It's, it's <laughs> no, been of huge. Not. Uh, but, you know, the college is moving forward. We're, right. We have many more students on campus this fall than we did during uh, the worst of the pandemic in 2020. And okay. it's, it's great to have people on campus again. Absolutely. Uh, I was getting a little lonely for a while. <laughs> right. But, um, but we're happy to do that, and we're happy to do it in a way that's safe for everybody. Absolutely. And now, how are you handling the way of safe for everybody on campus? Well, the Connecticut State Colleges and Universities, which is the community colleges, the state universities, and Charter Oak, have a vaccine mandate in place now. So students have to attest if they've been vaccinated, okay. uh, as do employees. Right. And if employees and students have not yet been vaccinated or who choose not to tell us, right. uh, we do have weekly testing that we've put in place. So, um, so it just helps ensure that you know, people are aware that vaccines are available uh, and that they, they are you know, uh, out there uh, and have helped reduce, I think, a lot of illnesses and, and deaths in our in our country uh, because of the vaccines. Um, and we're also doing masking all the okay. time. So, uh, you know, so unless you're in the office by yourself, right. if you're in a class, have to wear a mask. If you're in a meeting, wear a mask. And uh, so far, so good. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, how big is the campus? Well, the campus itself physically is about 40 acres okay. uh, in Middletown, our main campus in Middletown. Uh, we have four buildings, uh, three that are dedicated to classrooms, laboratories, television studio, okay. uh, and so forth. And the fourth building is our student center and uh, offices like my office, administrative uh -huh. offices. Okay. So it's, uh, it's a really nice campus overlooking um, the river. You can see the Portland Bridge in the background oh, and cool. it gets a little windy All in right. the winter. <laughs> but we have a, um, a great campus, uh, great grounds. We also run a, a Meriden satellite location at Platt High School. Oh, really? which, yeah, and that's been uh, a great uh, to be able to offer classes in the city of Meriden uh, four nights a week. Uh, we have a great relationship with the school district and the teachers and the superintendent and the uh, the principal of the school there. Uh, and this is our fifth year, actually, wow. in Platt High School. Uh, but the main campus, um, you know, I'd invite anybody to come uh, take a look and, and check out what Middlesex has to offer. Absolutely. And what are some of the programs that you guys have to offer? Well, one of our signature programs is in New Media Studies. So okay. we do have a, a multimedia television and video production center. Wow. Um, that's pretty well enrolled. And uh, those, the students who are in that program actually can pick from various specialties like film and video, uh, news and sports, digital marketing, and a few other specialties that we offer. Okay. Um, we also have a fairly large criminal justice program, uh -huh. uh, business, and allied health and uh, science areas. So we have actually uh, the state's only two-year program in opticianry, so you can go get your eyeglasses or your contact lenses at Middlesex, and students uh, learn how to become licensed opticians, uh, and, and a 50-year arrangement with Middlesex Hospital to run a program in radiogra radiology. Okay. Um, so students learn to become x-ray technicians and can then get their certifications in CAT scan, uh, MRI, mammography. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we have a vet tech program, so if you're interested in, in helping with animals and become a veterinary nurse of sorts, sure. the vet tech program is, is pretty big. Uh, and these programs that lead, uh, they lead to jobs actually, right. and they're all accredited by professional organizations. Um, and, and actually, um, if you are kind of not sure what you want to do, mm -hmm. we have a pretty broad general studies and liberal arts program. So you can kind of uh, mix and match the courses that you want to try to take and see if something sparks your interest and then cool. you know, transfer to a four-year school. Oh, cool. You got a yeah. very busy university. Yeah, it's, uh, it's try to be a little bit of uh, <laughs> something for everybody. Absolutely. Um, but again, it's, it's great to have the students back and to see them working in classrooms and working in the studios and the science labs and, uh, and all that goes with being a college student. Now, how hard was it for you guys once the COVID started to basically, I'm assuming you guys were, everything was online and everything was done through Zoom or Skype or- Yeah, that's one right. The, one of the platforms. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, about, I think it was March 13th, 2020. It was, we're gonna close the campus for the foreseeable future. And um, all of our classes moved to online format for the rest of that semester. And okay. yeah, it was tough. Um, I will say that we've done a pretty good job at Middlesex in training faculty how to use the technology tools we have, you know. Okay. 
not all perfect, no. but, um, but one of the really good um, coincidences of timing was we announced we were going to shut the campus down just before spring break. So that gave us a week to have the faculty get up to speed, reacclimate themselves with Blackboard, which is uh, one of the technologies we use. Okay. Um, we use things that look like Zoom, um, Teams, Microsoft sure. Teams. Sure, absolutely. Webex. Yeah, familiar um, Teams. And um, it also allowed us to have our student services, our registration, financial aid, admissions, all of those services had to shift online as well. Really? So, um, so imagine you're interested in coming to college, but the college is closed. Right. How do you, how do you, how do you apply? How, how do you, do you work around it? Right. So we had to do to change all those processes to online. So, um, so yeah, we were completely closed to the public for the rest of that semester, and then slowly reopened uh, in the fall of 2020. Had a handful of classes on campus, uh, and then spring a little bit more. Mm -hmm. And of course, then the vaccines came around. Right. Uh, so we were. Um, we're about half and half right now this semester. Okay. okay. And the semester schedule is, fall semester is what month to what month? Oh, we just started uh, classes August 26th. Okay. So we're already underway for the fall semester. Okay, cool. And we run until mid-December. All right. And then spring picks up again um, right after Martin Luther King Day. Yep. Until mid-May. Nice, nice. Yeah. So things are, obviously things are going well with the beginning of the school academic year this year? Yeah, everything's off to a good start. Um, again, we've got more students on campus and still quite a few online courses for students either who, you know, maybe are a little bit hesitant about coming back to campus mm -hmm. or for students who work. Uh, right. one, of, one of the things we found when we went to online classes is how much easier it was for students who work or have families to be able to stay at home and do their classwork. Okay. Now, when the pandemic first hit, if one of our students had children of their own who were also kids, that was could have been a little bit of a problem because everybody's right. home. Absolutely. Uh, taking classes and sharing computers and exactly. Wi-Fi. Uh, but what we did find, though, was uh, many of our students who are a little bit older, yeah. who are returning to college, found it a lot easier to take the classes online. So. I guess we could say that that's something we learned from the pandemic is how mm -hmm. to do an online program much better. Right. Exactly. Wow. You you guys are a very busy college, even though with what's going on and where what, when it first started to where we are now. Yeah. Exactly. You know, and, and again, you know, all of us have to watch what's happening in Absolutely. public health. We got new variants that might be coming our way. And oh yeah. So again, main thing is to stay safe, wear the mask. Absolutely. Get vaccinated if you can. Uh, and if you can't, there are people who have, you know, medical reasons and other right. objections to a vaccine, but you got to stay safe. Absolutely. Absolutely. And from what I understand is there's a party coming up. There is a party coming up. Yes. It's uh, Middlesex Community College's 10th annual Red Moon Festival. Ah. And we run this in conjunction with our foundation, which is a separate organization that helps the college raise money for okay. scholarships okay. and for programmatic enhancements. So, um, so every year uh, we have this event. It's actually this year October 2nd, which is a Saturday night okay. at 6 o'clock. And we're having it on campus and our main campus outdoors to Ooh. try to stay safe. Excellent. And uh, we'll have um, entertainment. We have a, a live band who will be playing with us called uh, Small Town Roots. All right. One of the band leaders is an alum of the college. And uh, it's kind of great. The idea is to have sort of a small town homecoming festival vibe to it. Okay. So we've got a band. We've got things to eat. Uh, some uh, wine, beer, and soft drink selections for people to enjoy. Oh, cool. Um, we have a, a silent auction, which actually will be online okay. this year, so you can bid on some various items that gifts people have um, donated to the cause and to help try to raise money for our foundation and for the college, and, and a live auction with some uh, items that we'll be auctioning off the night of the event. And like I said, it all goes to a great cause. Uh, we use the money for student scholarships, okay. And uh, occasionally we do have some of the money go to one of the college's academic programs. Okay. So a couple of years ago, uh, the Red Moon Fest benefited uh, our media center. So we were able to buy some equipment enhancements with that. This year we're celebrating the 50th anniversary of our radiology program. And cool. um, so uh, it's, we, it's a program that we have uh, at Middlesex Hospital. All the 
the clinical courses are taught there. Mm -hmm. And we're really excited that the hospital CEO, Vin Capice, is our honorary chairman of this year's Red Moon Fest. Oh, cool. So yeah, so we hope to raise some money for uh, scholarships and for a radiology program. Um, and, and actually the radiology program, the students who graduate work at the hospital, but also work at all of the clinical settings throughout the county. Really? So, yeah, so wow. we got a pretty, pretty far reach. I was gonna say, he was on with me right before I'm sorry, right after they opened the clinic here in Westbrook. Mm -hmm. So He's a great guy. Great, oh, he is. A great community really, partner. Really nice guy. Right. I've had, had him on a couple times. So he's a very, very hospitable. It's like always oh, very welcoming. Sure. Absolutely. Why, why not? Why not? So tell us a little bit about the foundation. Well, the foundation, again, is a separate organization that helps raise funds for the college. Okay. We have a, a small board of people uh, chaired by Laura Kruger, who is an alum of the college actually went through our media program uh, a number of years ago. Cool. And um, the board is composed of people in the community who believe in the mission of Middlesex Community College and in community colleges in general. You know, right? If, uh, if we didn't exist, I would hope that the community would say we need a local institution where students can go and get a good start on their education. So, um, so these are folks who believe in our mission, who um, help us raise funds through events like the Red Moon. Mm -hmm. um, we have a 5K run uh, in May that we usually do to, um, to, to raise money also for scholarships. And, and we also look for naming opportunities on campus. So we have, have still need to do a little bit of work on that. But for example, uh, we could have the Pete Mazzetti TV studio. For, there you go. For example. There you go. Um, but we do work partner with folks like Middlesex Hospital okay. to, to uh, help sponsor events like the Red Moon Fest. Um, and also to, to help us with partnerships like radiology mm -hmm. is an example where, like I said, the classes are all taught at the hospital. We couldn't teach those classes on our campus. We just don't have the labs on our campus to do that. No. So it's really important that we work with people like uh, Vin Capis at the hospital and um, uh, Dr. Uh, Rob Olson and Virginia Nunez at, uh, at Piper Memorial Hospital where we have our vet tech program. Okay. Great, great partnerships to have where they host our students and they help teach our students. Dr. Minkler, would you mind sticking around for another segment? Absolutely. We'll be right back. Smart TVs and streaming services have taken over the television industry. VSC TV is proud to announce our presence on Apple TV and Roku to make watching your favorite shows even easier. You can access this service by downloading the Cablecast ScreenWeave app. Then choose Valley Shore Community TV from the list of channels. Select VSC TV Live to watch our channel in full HD. Or pick a show from our on-demand video library. VSC TV is your local Connecticut Midshore Valley digital connection. Welcome back to this week's edition of the Pete Mazzetti Show. I'm your host, Pete Mazzetti, sitting here with Steve Minkler, who is CEO of Middlesex Community College. Steve, welcome back. Well, good to be back, Pete. Thanks. So, Steve, we were talking a little bit about in the first segment about the university and how you guys handled the pandemic as to from the beginning of it to where you are now. Let's talk about that a little bit more. Well, I think it, one of the things that we tried to do from the very beginning, even a couple months before closing the campus yep. um, during the, the worst of it in 2020, is you kind of felt by you know watching the news and hearing advice from people in the Department of Public Health that something big was coming. Right. So we I would say January, late January, early February, formed a team of people that we, you know, we would meet almost every day to kind of plan out the what ifs. Right. What are we gonna do if we have to close the campus? Right. How are we gonna have faculty ready to go to teach students online? How are we gonna tell everybody what's happening? Right. You know, there's so many ways to reach people nowadays, whether you're on a website or on social media, email, telephone call, mm -hmm. <laughs> old, go really old school and call exactly. people. You know, how do we let people know what's going on? So uh, it was really important to us that we had a communication game plan yeah. as well as a campus safety game plan. Right. So, you know, unfortunately, you know, everybody's kind of worst fears came about that we had to 
engage that plan. Um, I will say that Middlesex Community College didn't do it alone. Okay. So we were working together with the other community colleges and state universities mm -hmm. uh, to share information. Sure. Um, a lot of that was coordinated by our system office, which is uh, located in Hartford. So right. people who are working very closely with the State Department of Public Health sure. to get their best information of what we needed to do. Um, we at the college worked with the, you know, principally the, the public health departments in Middletown and Meriden. Uh, some of the early days, we, we had to worry about things like contact tracing. Right. So if a student said, oh, you know, I tested positive, well, then we had to yeah. actually go find who they might have been in touch with. You know, that's still kind of important, but I think as things just started to, sp to spin right. uh, a little more, that just became very uh, difficult to do. So, so I'm proud to say that the college thought ahead enough um, and had a plan that we were able to engage pretty quickly. And, and that has served us pretty well. Um, we were able to stay on top of the communication uh, for the rest of the semester and, um, and as a way to try to get students back to the college in the fall of 2020 and then you know, the last couple semesters, really doing a lot of outreach. So you know, making sure people are working the phones and mm -hmm. making sure all of our uh, social media are up to date. Uh, getting the word out through you know folks like you who do right. very important community shows like this to, to let them know what's happening. Absolutely. Yeah. Now as far as how are things looking now on campus because you guys just started your fall semester a couple weeks ago so how are, th how are things looking? Well I think they're, they're again looking good and we've um, it's probably time to uh, uh, in my opinion at the college to, to really re-engage that team I was just talking about. We, okay. You know, the summer things are a little slower at the college. Um, most of our, pretty much all of our courses during the summer are online anyway. Right. So that gave us a little bit of breathing room. And, um, you know, but now that the semester's really getting into full swing, it's time, I think, for that team to get back together and review our plans to see, you know, how things are going. Uh, I had a meeting today with some of our student leaders who, okay. um, we're, I'm, I'm glad they were very open and, and concerned that sometimes um, you know, faculty may not be getting back to them as quickly as they would like. Right. Because you think even if somebody has a bad cold, you don't really want you coming to campus. No. You know, we don't want, you, know, you, you don't want to spread anything even if it's a common cold, but right. heaven forbid it's something worse. Exactly. So I think it's a, it's a bit of a mind shift and a culture shift for our faculty to, to try to work more openly and diligently with students who are just absent. Right. You, know, you don't want them coming to campus. No. So, um, so we heard a, a few good, um, a few pointers from our own students to okay. say, oh, here's how you can make some adjustments. It's still early, right. still only this second, third week of class, but here's how uh, you guys can help us a little bit more. Absolutely. Now, what is the mission statement of the university? Well, the mission statement begins with students are the center of Middlesex Community College. Okay. And I refer to that always when we have meetings on campus because, you know, you think about, it almost seems obvious. Okay. You know, you're a college and you have students. But what if we didn't have students? What if right. we didn't pay attention to our students? You know, what if we didn't listen to those students today who were telling us, you know, the faculty need to talk to us a little bit more? Right. We wouldn't have a college. Right. So um, our focus always is to make sure that, you know, if we make important decisions about what's happening that we put the students in the center of what we're doing. So if we're going to um, have a COVID policy, mm -hmm. how is that going to affect the students? Is it going to make it easier or more difficult for them to get what they need? Right. Is it going to make them safer? Right. And if they're safer, then it's going to be easier for them. So, you know, I try to take the approach that we look to our students for, um, even if they're not telling us directly, you're looking to the student for your answer, because if we don't do it in their best interest, we're not serving the public by being a college at that point, right. in my opinion. Absolutely. Now, when you're, when you're in person in class, what's the student-to-teacher student, student -to -teacher ratio? Well, it's a lot lower now. I mean, we right. still have maintained some social distancing. Okay. Um, it's, uh, well, in the last, last fall, a year ago, it was, it was six feet, at least. Okay. Uh, so now we're doing about three feet. Okay. Uh, and, and again, having masks all the time and having this vaccination mandate helps us be a little more confident that that's okay. Right. But you know, I think um, 
in a typical classroom in the past, uh, let's say a, uh, one of our uh, classrooms may have held 40 students. I mm -hmm. think now today it maybe holds 24. Oh wow! So okay. we are, are spreading people you out downsized. a little bit. Yeah, and in some ways, you know, that's good because it actually gives students smaller classes. Right. But it's a bit of a challenge for us if you think about if the, some people don't like to hear them, sometimes a college is almost like a business. But right. if I'm only putting 24 students in a room instead of 40 then I've got less money coming in to pay the teacher, you know, exactly. if you think about that. Exactly. But it is all for the best right now. And, and luckily, um, you know, uh, the colleges, many, many organizations, uh, but particularly community colleges, have had some help from the state and federal government mm -hmm. to, to cover the difference right now. Right. So we're okay. Um, but uh, but it, again, it does help ha giving students smaller classes. Which oh, is absolutely, cool. it does, absolutely it does. Now. Let's go back to the fundraiser that we have in October. Yep, so October 2nd, the Middlesex Community College Foundation, Middlesex Community College Red Moon Festival. Okay. It's October 2nd at 6 p.m. on our main campus in Middletown. Uh, tickets are 40 bucks a person. Okay. And for that $40, you get live entertainment, you get food, drink, uh, the chance to bid on some really nice prizes and uh, a silent auction, and as a, a live auction that will also have the night of the event. We've got a gorgeous campus. Yeah. I've already ordered no rain. Okay. <laughs> All right. So it's going to be a nice night. Uh, but we have a gorgeous campus, and you know, it's, it'll be a nice night to be under the stars and uh, enjoy uh, each other's company and listen to some good music and, and raise some money for a good cause. The absolutely. students at Middlesex. Absolutely, absolutely. So you, or, you did you call the weatherman already? Yeah, I did. Yeah. All I right. Put in a good word. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's hey, that's that's that that is always a good thing. That's right. always a good thing. Now I'm sure I'm sure that there is a difference in learning taking a class online rather than taking it in person on campus. It's got to be it's got to be tough doing online learning. Yeah, it is. I think, you know, before the pandemic, um, the Middlesex Community College, many colleges had a pretty active online program to begin with. Okay. And those are for students who, who kind of knew what they were getting into, if I could say it that way. Sure. Uh, it is a different uh, way of learning and, and teaching, too. I've, I've taught online classes myself. It's, it is different than being in front of a room of people. Right. Uh, I think the biggest difference is it's more self-motivated. Okay. Um, so if you think about uh, if you were on campus, well, I have to go to a class Mondays and Wednesdays at 1 o'clock and right. then Tuesday, Thursday at 9 in the morning. Right. Um, most of the online classes are you, you have to set your own time to be online to ah. do the work. Now, instructors could have due dates, like you still have, it's not completely self-paced. Right. But you do have to do the work throughout the week and have, have everything handed in to the instructor by, say, the end of the week. Right. But you do have to be very good at time management oh, absolutely. and be diligent about logging in. Right. Um, and some of the classes actually uh, after the pandemic is we did what's called live remote. So um, kind of like, you know, we all got used to Zoom and mm -hmm. Teams and all sure. that. So your class was on Teams or Zoom right. and the instructor was presenting live um, to you. I think the, the hardest thing is... Um, and I'm guilty of this too, having been in many, many meetings <laughs> over the last year and a half, is, is maintaining focus and attention. Oh, absolutely. Me too. Yeah. It's tough, isn't it? It, it, is. it and, is. And it's too easy to get diverted. You know, okay, I'm listening over here, now I'll check my email. When exactly. I'm looking. Exactly. So, so yeah, it is, it is a, a different experience. And um, I think, um, you know, the students who are diligent about it can be successful, but I think it's just been overwhelming for the last year and a half to just learn only in that format. So right. that's why I think we're really happy uh, to have students back on campus and they're happy to be back too. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And like you said earlier, you guys still have some classes that are online as well? Yes, yeah. So um, the in, in fact, I'm even surprised we have uh, still a lot of science classes. So really? our science department uh, during the pandemic figured out how to do um, send at home kits to students. Now nothing dangerous or right. anything like that but they were able to send kits home to students in chemistry and biology classes. And one of the important things too is that we had to do was make sure that the classes could transfer. So let's right. say you're taking a biology class at Middlesex, right. you're doing these uh, at home kits. Yep. We wanted to be sure that places like UConn, University of Hartford, the state universities and mm -hmm. others would take them as transfer and Absolutely. accept them as being 
mostly the same as if the students took them in person. Absolutely. And yeah. that, that's going pretty well? It has gone. And I think, you know, uh, as the pandemic continues, we'll see how long uh, we're able to keep those agreements in place. But I would imagine at some point, if we're back to something like we used to know as normal, mm -hmm. I think the expectation is going to be you got to take those classes on campus. Again. Absolutely, absolutely. And if people want more information on Middlesex Community College, where should they go? Easiest thing to do is go to our website, okay. mxcc. Dot edu. Okay. And if they want to learn more about the Red Moon Fest, mxcc.edu slash Red Moon, all okay. one word. And everything is online. That not all the information you're going to need is online. Everything's there. Absolutely. Yeah. All and the I'm information about our academic programs, how to become a student, how to apply for financial aid. Uh, you can see a lot of information about our short-term workforce development programs too. That you know, in a few weeks, you could be. Uh, in line to get a good paying job cool. in manufacturing or healthcare or uh, a few other fields that we Excellent. offer. Dr. Minkler, thanks for some time and hopefully we'll see you again soon. Thanks for having me again, Pete. Thanks, Steve. On behalf of Steve Minkler, I'm Pete Mazzetti. Thanks. Good night. We'll see you next time.